Hi, everyone. Welcome. I hope you're doing well. And hi. Hi, hi, hi. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I'm in Brooklyn, New York, in my studio. And uh, it's, the sun is shining in. It's colder here today. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to teach this class and talk about filling your entire page from edge to edge, leaving um, no spare room, <laughs> which is something I love to do. Um, sort of the maximalist approach. Um, yeah, so, and yes, I'm the author of the Draw Your Day book series, Draw Your Day and Draw Your World, and I'm working on a new one now. And yes, so why don't we switch over? I'm just gonna get started because we only have an hour. Okay. So I just pulled out some examples and I know sometimes it's hard to see it like super focused, but I think it's pretty clear. These are just some examples of how I just go right from edge to edge and have different things bleed right off the edges, kind of, um, if you will, like a camera lens or uh, a viewfinder. And I'm just gonna flip through some examples. I do it a lot with flowers and, and patterns, sort of when I, in the flowering mood, and so my, a lot of them kind of look like that. And sometimes I fill the a whole spread and sometimes just a page. Um, just a few examples, um, yeah. And I have, I do make my own sketchbooks. So the ones that I just showed you are handmade using um, uh, so water, a uh, hot press watercolor paper. And I have a tutorial on my, my Substack if anybody's interested. Um, but that's what I do use regularly. But whenever I'm teaching and what the sketchbook that I like to recommend is, is this one, it is um, handbook, journal, linen series. I'm trying to look for the, it looks like this. It's just very plain. The paper is cold press, but it's smooth. So I really like it. Um, their wet paper is also great if you're just wanting to work on individual sheets of paper. And I think on the Michaels um, suggested materials, they put on the Strathmore um, sketchbook, which is also really, really nice. A lot of friends use this one. Again, it's this one's a little, little more cold pressy. So it has a little more texture. Um, this one is eight and a half by eight and a half square. And I, I like to work square-ish. So this one is a book that I use all the time. Now, I just want to go and uh, write. The only thing that I did ahead of time to prep for this was, as far as the prepping the, the materials, was I did a very light wash of color. And it's not... Um, it, it what's so what's so great about the Inktense paints is that you can do this and work right on top of it and the, and it it won't move so it it's sort of just like a little bit of a a base just to put some color down and have a back room background um, so I just I did that and the other thing that's great about the Derwent paints as far as um, this wash is like you can do really light washes but you can also get really um, opaque color, the more layers you put down. So I'm just gonna get started. And what what I, I like to remind people is, if you're thinking of your page as a viewfinder, then everything is gonna fall right off the edges. And this can be like one single scene, or you can sort of think of it like what we're gonna do, you can th think of it as like a piece of fabric or um, pattern design, surface design. And uh, what I'd like to do is I'm going to, because it's cold here, I'm going to go with this sort of winter theme and just start with the, some bigger images first. But I'm not going to even put anything right in the middle. I'm starting on the edges. So 
Um, hi, Ava. I'm sorry. I'm, I shouldn't be looking at the chat, but it's, <laughs> it's I'm seeing people say hello. So I'm, I'm going to start with a mitten, a hat, a scarf, some, some wintry things, and add some like hot drinks. I had like a few little uh, images in my mind that I'm going to start with, but I'm not even good. I'm not putting anything right down in the middle of the page. I'm actually going to just start to play around with my first line is coming right off the edge. And I'm just going to sort of This is all from memory. I'm not looking at reference. So there's a mitten that is touching the edge. Now I'll do maybe coming in from the side, a scarf or a part of a scarf because it's coming off the edge. And these are really, really light sketches. I'm, I'm barely touching the paper with my pencil. I'm just getting the like basic gist of what I'm gonna be drawing down. Um, I will just be going over that with paint. So I don't wanna go too crazy with my pencil. I'm using a 3D, 3B pencil because I like to work with soft pencils. Um, and I really know how to like go super, super light with it. Some people push, have natural tendency to like push really hard. Um, and I urge you to try not to. That way you're not putting any dents in the paper and you can always erase. And up here, um, adding a hat. right off the page. So I'm starting with three big, big things. I'm gonna to start to add now another level of, of size of things. So um, this can be anything, anything that you want. If you're just wanting to draw flowers or patterns or shapes and that are representing nothing at all, that's totally fine. Um, I always try and teach in the, really trying to reinforce that I'm not expecting people to follow along with what I do exactly. It is just, this. these are lessons that apply to your own style, your own techniques, and even your own, the materials that you like to use. Now I'm adding some, a mug. with some whipped cream, some hot chocolate. Now, I don't, depending, I'm starting to have things uh, get close to each other. And once I establish the distance between things, as I keep drawing, that is going to be like a consistent kind of roadmap that goes through the page. So I'll keep, I'll explain what I mean as I go forward. Um, let's see if I add another warm. So as you can see, nothing I've drawn so far is not coming off the edge of the page. And I'm actually working outside in, which is different than how people normally approach a line page. I think they normally would start in the middle. A little cup of tea, warm cup of tea. Okay, now that I have mostly my big items, I'm going to start to add fillers. And it's good to have sort of like a pocket full of like little fillers, like sort of a um, a playlist or like a a little log in your brain of little things that can fill the spaces. And it's, I like to, usually have about three of those 
although it can just be one thing, you can fill the whole space with with um, berries or I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna do some some pine needles. So I'm seeing what the negative space is, the room that I have, and then I'm just adding some of these small, smaller elements and filling, filling the spaces as I, as I go. Now, the thing to think of, always remember is the more you do this, the easier it is. I have a little bit of space here, so I'll be filling that. I have a little bit of space here, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think I'll try, I'll introduce some little berries. Another one here. This one can come be coming off the page. Here I can add. another tea bag or something. So now I'm working on my mid-size elements, just filling the spaces that I have left. And once I get to that level, then I know I might even need to get smaller. So I'm all, I'm going to add some some snowflakes. And some of them will just be little circles. Now I have a weird, awkward space here. So maybe I'll none none of none of my elements are touching each other, but maybe there's one pine needle that comes underneath the scarf. So a lot of a lot of my marks right now with the pencil are like little scribbles. I mean they're really really loose. I can pull it up to the camera and show you in a minute. And as I go, I can always add more. So as you can see, they're very, very loose. I'm just filling, 
getting a plan. What I love about the pencil is, and I'm used to doing this, I practiced a lot. I really didn't use the eraser at all. But if you are planning something like this, where you're trying to give your give the page a uniform coverage and you want equal space between the elements and you're sort of planning things out, it's, it's really nice to use a pencil first. Um, you don't have to. Some people go right for it with with their um, with their pen or their paint. It's, it's totally uh, up to you and your comfort level. So now I'm going to start to put in some color for my It's, it's nice to have somewhat of a limited palette when you're doing a cover in your page. You don't have to, but for this, I'm going to um, just use a green, this sort of mustardy yellow ochre, which I'm mixing two colors here. I'm mixing the kiwi and the burnt yellow ochre. And I'm going down pretty light just to block in my um, my drawing, my my the elements on the page. I always have a paper towel for blotting. Using the Derwent water brushes, and this one is one of the medium sizes. I really like this one. I also really love to use the broad brush to get larger elements down and just to keep myself loose. And if the paint goes down a little blotchy at first, the more layers you add, the more solid become that so I'm just blocking in these big bits these big bigger elements the matching scarf hat and mittens. And now I'm gonna take this darker green, Ionian green, it says on the palette, if you're if if you guys are following along. Hey, Sam, since you've used the water brushes so much, can you talk about how to not get too much water to come out of them? That was a question, couple questions that came up. Oh, um, it's interesting because I don't, I don't, I don't squeeze very much. Okay. And they sort of naturally, you know, right now it's, it got a little dry at the bottom of that stroke. So I know I can just squeeze a tiny bit, um, but just, I wouldn't, I would just let the brush kind of do its thing because it doesn't require a lot of uh, action on your part, if that makes sense. Um, it, they just kind of, after you use them, 
and break them in a little, they they just kind of flow. Um, I heard, I don't I don't really push the button very much. I do when I'm actually putting it into the paint. I squeeze a little bit, but not a lot. And then if too much water is is on the brush, that's another reason to always, you know, just have a paper towel near, nearby for blotting. So working from the outside in is something that I find I think a go-to technique, which it just goes a little bit, it's a little bit, um, I think counterintuitive, or it's just a little bit of a different approach. And pretty much if you if you start from the edges and you have everything falling off the page, then that's like the foundation for your 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 entire composition. I'm painting this pretty fast, but I am going to go over it with a little bit of ink and solidify the, the shapes. And if you, I was going to have that go underneath, but I'm, I've just made a decision to not have it touch. That's the beauty of having the pencil is that you can make those decisions as you, as you go. Oh, that's a little close. I can move it ever so slightly. So just know this is this is the first step. This is the first layer. I'm letting it dry and then a lot more detail and layers of paint can go down on top. And if you're using the Derwent paints, they dry they dry flat so you can just keep layering, which is been the greatest thing about them. Why I love them so much. I'm just using the different greens. Looking very wintry, a little Christmassy. That's okay. <laughs> Green and red. I'm going to add one more color, which is going to be a kind of like, um, well, just pretty much the paint's gray. Gray. Now, if I add the red dots here, I can tell as I'm going, well, I didn't add any red dots down here. So I probably should change this snowflake to be some berries. That way I have a balance. And I can even have one little berry coming off the side here. That looks pretty good. So, as you're as you're um, waiting for paint to dry and as you're moving about and filling things in, um, it's it's not I this is what I usually do is and you do not have to 
do things the way I do it, but I go back and forth between ink and paint. And I'm just using a Derwent line maker. You just wanna make sure that whatever pen that you're using, if you do decide to use some ink, um, that it's fully waterproof. And some of, some of the elements don't have to be inked, but I am gonna do the snowflakes in ink. They're just kind of like little dotted stars. And I'll go over them with some of that Payne's gray, kind of blue, blue gray. It's also a nice time once you get gotten a lot down, it's to take a step back and say, okay, how, how is the balance of all the elements? If you want it to look like a little bit of a, like an overall pattern, then you just, you do want to sort of have things balance and coat sort of float across the page, all of your big, your, all of your little filler elements. Hey, Sam, once you get done with that snowflake, can you just hold your sketchbook up towards the camera so we can see like one of the snowflakes close up? Oh, yeah. They're just little like nothings. <laughs> oh, they're little doodles. They're little doodles. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, you know, erase the pencil. They'll come hopefully look a little more like snowflakes when I, um, when I add the paint. All right, let's see what happens if I it's just little. Scribbles almost. Partly because we're we only have an hour, and partly because I like to keep things a little abstract if I can. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going, I'm gonna add some ink to the big, big pieces. And my ink does not have to follow the paint or the lines exactly. Just adding a little bit of random shading just to give the illusion that it's a scarf. And I find that when I'm working with the Derwent paints that it, it all does come together towards more towards the end because of adding layers of paint.
I'm just adding a few lines to sort of give the suggestion that it's knitted. I don't, it's not really anything precise. Now I'm going to add the outline of these mugs, these cups, because they're going to be a lighter, a lighter color. And I don't know that it again. It, it takes practice, like knowing how to draw certain things without finishing them because they fall off the page, but. The more you do it, the more and the more you're comfortable imagining, you know, how that full element would look. You, you know, sometimes, sometimes things get squished, sometimes you lose perspective, but the more you, the more you do it and the more you draw certain things, the easier it gets. And again, I, like I said, if you have if you're just dealing with polka dots and, and you know, um, po polka dots, stripes, uh, abstract leaves, like this, this one, for example, I mean, it's just anything. You just see that there are big, big elements, and then there's like secondary big elements, and then there's the little ones that fill all the spaces. So you just kind of come up with that and you can come up with it on a side piece of paper and like have all your, your little things there that you're gonna be using. Um, Now I'm gonna paint some of these. Now I'm realizing that if I have two grayish mugs, then they'll be like very gray heavy on the, this side of the page. So how can I balance it? How maybe I bring some of the gray up here into this little tag, or maybe this, this mug has some other color that I'm working with. I'm gonna try and figure that out it doesn't have to be exact, but if you do want the idea or have that feeling that it's a pattern, then some of those, it is important to think about some of those, those things about the, how to balance the color and up, across the page. I'm just doing a very light wash. in some of this. A little bit looks like tea. Maybe some, a little more brown in here because it's supposed to be hot chocolate. So the key messages are big and small, have big and small things, at least three of your big thing, three big things. Cause if you, if you just have two, sometimes just for composition, it's always nice to have at least three. There's always exceptions, but if you have three big things like this spread, Three big orange flowers.
And I'm happy to answer more questions if anybody has as I'm kind of filling in some smaller elements. So now what I'm going to do is take that blue gray, which is the Payne's gray, just mixed with a little bit of the um, bright blue. Actually, what is it? My, no, it's ultramarine. I'll just do some circles and then I can do some light ones as well. Hey Sam, somebody asked if you can talk about how you think through adding shading and depth to objects. Um, well, it depends on sort of the style I'm, I'm working in. And because everything I'm doing now is, is made up and I'm not looking at the light or, re or, or any reference. I'm just sort of, I just go from kind of memory. I mean, it's not accurate. It's not anything that it, it's not supposed to look super real. Um, so I had, I mean, it, it, it's just like anything else where it just takes practice to sort of learn your style and get used to how things might sort of look or 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 they can look super realistic if that's what you're going for. Um, I do think that when I'm using, I know that when I'm using the intense paints, I like to go light and then add and add and add. And it just, it just brings like, so if I keep, you know, add another layer, then I can get a little bit more depth. So it's partly getting to know your materials and then also partly like, I mean, it's what you're going for. I don't know if that answered the question. Um, I think that helps. Um, there was one other one in here that I just wanted to ask. Yeah. So it just said when making a page with many pictures or like when you, when you often draw your entire day, right? Or you have yes. multiple objects on there. How do you think about the composition um, just from keeping them space? Like, do you tend to focus on one ar object that's a little bit larger? Or like, can you just kind of talk about your composition? Well, I, I do tend to go about it the same way. Um, there, there was a class that we did, one of the first classes that we did together on Michael's where it was just fitting lots of things together on a page. And it, and it's, it is kind of going through like, it's like a puzzle that if I start with one thing and I do like to have random things start off the edge of the page or I'll start in a corner and then I just build upon it um, and add things. I'm trying to think if, if there's something I can, like an example. Um, I mean, this spread is, is kind of good because I don't remember what I started with here. I think I probably started with my hand holding the the clementines. And then, you know, deciding where things go and how they fit. And then if I have a little blank space or a little space to fill, you know, I might I might have pulled this down further to fill in this area. It's the same thing that I'm doing here. I mean, obviously, this is much more quick um, in a Michaels class. We only have an hour. I'm just trying to, you know, ex show something, but this, you know, probably took me a full hour, hour and a half of concentrated time. And so, you know, I'll, I probably added little numbers because I had space. I mean, I, I make decisions like that on the go and it is just about like filling in those awkward spaces. 
and it's kind of like typography because I studied design before I um before I started drawing my days and, and, and illustrating. And that's why I do incorporate a lot of lettering. And um, so I think I think about the whole page and it's just an aid, like it, it comes with practice. And, you know, the decision to, to put the writing down the side was probably because I didn't have room at the top or on the bottom. And so I just, it, like things just, and it's all about filling the space the same way I'm I'm doing here, but this is just very basic. So, um, I, I I hope I hope that I hope that helps. I mean, it's something that so it it is hard to explain. This was built on we I went to um, a museum. It was a museum day, and then I was at botanical gardens, and so there's there's art pieces, and I layered them, and in my my um books and in my lessons, I talk about layering, about drawing things right on top of each other. I'm not doing that here. I didn't really do that here. Although there are things that intersect, but here is some an example of like layering and building things right, drawing things right on top of each other and making the decision of what comes in front of something else. Um, and I use my pencil to plan that. So, I mean, I could get really, really dig deeper and like teach more, um, but we only we only have an hour, so I'm getting the 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 basics down here, which is big, small, and have your like little filler items, and then you just start to you just start to fill the space. I mean, if I if I I think just for time's sake, it's better for me to just work on filling the space rather than getting the drawings to look super amazing. But if I'm using that limited palette, I've got a really light um, version of this color going right now. And I just, just uh, you know, I, I just feel the pages. Some, it, the more you go, like the things, some of those, some of those, dots or it could be a leaf, it could be um, a square, it could be a triangle. I mean, anything that you're using to um, fill those spaces just, you know, repeats over and over. And it's, for me, it's like ther therapy to to get it all in there and work on filling, filling all the, the space up. Well, I, no, I, I forgot, I don't think I finished my thought, but typography, when we learn how to set type, when you're studying design and learning typography, there's, you, you want the spaces between the letters to be very even. And so it's just something sort of ingrained in my brain about like having consistent space. And I play with that when I'm drawing and painting as well. there any other questions? It's nice to have something that could have words on it, like these little T, these little T um, tags. So maybe what I'll do is add um, the date. So I just put, put the date on the little tag. I don't, I would, I'll think if anybody has suggestions of what I should write on that one.
Initials, yeah, that's a good idea. So yeah, it's just fun. And then you can just keep going. There, the beauty of the Derwent paints too is if I wanted to, if I didn't like all the little dots going on and I wanted to add some bold color behind, I really, I really could do a, like a whole another layer of paint and it wouldn't really, it would layer on top of this, but it wouldn't interrupt, like it wouldn't blend these or make a mess of these colors, which is super nice. Um, and yeah, you just keep going with layering to get depth. Oh, I'm, I'm reading a little bit of the comments. Yes, this is something that once you keep practicing and, and then you just, you just want to fill your pages, it can be really relaxing, just really nice and soothing too. And you can, I mean, these, those pages where I'm filling them with pattern and Like, I know that these leaves I added after the fact. So let me just show you how that would work. If I wanted to, I'm going to add a light green in here. I can just go right over and add some lighter um, pine needles. And you, for the most part, I mean, there sometimes it moves a little bit, but for the most part, the the paint underneath just doesn't it doesn't move. Um, and so I can I can make a decision later on to add something in the background like this, and it won't. And then it just it just adds like more to it, and it just looks like more of a a, a cool pattern. And I'm just seeing like, okay, visually, where would I add them to balance the page and how, so that it doesn't just look like one random element is introduced out of nowhere. And they can, it can just go right over what you've already done. Okay, I'm going to add my initials like somebody suggested.
So if if I were really good on Procreate too, or on the, the computer, I mean, I'm not bad on the computer, but if I if that were my thing, I could bring this in and then create a repeat pattern um, if that was something that I was into. Um, so this is a great way of planning those projects as well. Um, yeah, I don't know, just really fun. So we we have like five more minutes. If anybody has questions, I just I just want to repeat and remind you how I started. I started with big things, these big things, and I all of them are bleeding off the edge. And it's just a really fun way to start. It breaks you away from like getting too sucked into the middle of the page and focusing on like, you know, one little thing and it really enables your whole page to be like a viewfinder. And it's just a fun way of approaching the blank page too. That, and it's something that I teach all the time. So um, somebody's asking what size waterproof pen. This one's a 0.2, but, and I sometimes use fountain pens with carbon ink. Um, these line maker pens are great and they're easy to find. Um, yeah. Is there anything, anything else? I'm happy to answer more. I get, I get going and then I, I like keep, I keep building because once you start and once you get established where things are, then, then you, it's fun to just add to add some more details. I could even do, I'll just do this really quickly, unless people have questions. I'll do, I can do little shadows under the big elements. And you just wanna get your wash to be really light. And then I, it's fun to do that so that things pop off the page. And if I, if I do that consistently, then the shadows would always be falling on it on the consistent side of, of the images. I'm big on adding shadows. So is there is there anything else? I'm I'm really here if you if you think of anything. There. <laughs> um just go ahead and ask. Or we're good. I want to remind you to join my mailing list on Substack uh, or on my website, just sdmbaker.com, because that is where I announce all my classes first with Derwent and anything else I'm up to. Um, and there's a membership on there where I have private, sort of more intimate classes with people. So you're all welcome to join. And yeah. And just reach out if you need anything. What's my website? Here, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you all.